So in a previous video, I demonstrated how to use the Tyco software to conduct follow-up work on a recently discovered asteroid. And that was a fairly straightforward video. Uh, in this one, I'd like to take a look at uh, two asteroids that are a little bit more challenging. So this is for those who run into some corner cases um, that uh, th this video it hopes to address the, uh, the more challenging um, uh, asteroids to confirm. So to start with, this is 2019 BG3, and this was a data set captured by station B03. So I'm going to change the observatory to that station code. So 34 images here, and as before, I'm going to perform express mode. So I'm going to do calibration, alignment, and plate solving. So all the same steps as I did before. And so calibration has finished, and now we are running alignment. So we'll give it a moment to do that. And now we are doing plate solving. Okay, so again, here's the output directory. So navigate to that. And so again, 2019 BG3. So I'll go ahead and type that in here. So again, so this is station B03. So if we want to pretend like we were the station that had originally captured these images, then I will delete all of these observations. So up to this point, we only have these to work with. And so I will attach ephemeris to the data set. Again, these steps were discussed in the other video, so I won't go into them in too much de detail here. But yes, the object is contained within the field of view uh, on each image. So up to this point, everything is fairly straightforward. I'm going to run the tracker, that's my preferred approach. And so auto threshold, 10 for the sensitivity threshold. And we'll use data set ephemeris. So this is a faster object from 66 to 67 arc seconds per minute. And if I run the tracker, you'll note Let's see what happens. Uh, no tracks identified. So you might think, okay, well, we're just out of luck. Well, this is one case where you might have to adjust the sensitivity thresholds. So I was using 10. And so I'm just going to go ahead and make it very sensitive. I'll say one. And um, yeah, data set ephemeris. Um, that, that's the other aspect to it as well. Um, the uh, max object speed which for this object it had to be updated as well which is done automatically through here um, but anyway everything's the same except for I have adjusted the sensitivity threshold so we'll give it a moment to run the tracker with that setting and we'll see if anything comes back okay so it looks like you can can't really see anything here so I adjust the brightness and now you can kind of start to see it so it is track number one so we did have the detection uh, it has noticeably higher quality than the other tracks 9.8 and the next one is at 7 8 and so forth um, and so anyhow let's proceed so with the star catalog I load up that and then perform verify track and so the animation here, uh, what we're looking at again, these are three stacks, and it's not terribly obvious, but it is a an object here that stands out from the streaks, and it's consistent within the um, from one frame to the next. So, yeah, that is indeed uh, the moving object. 
So, okay, let's create the observations. This is 2019 BG3, and we'll see how well that worked. So, let's, uh, observation one, two, and three, as you can see. Um, so, let's compare with the existing observations. So, um, in this case, actually, uh, station V03 actually only created two. Um, observations in this particular set as you'll notice um, yeah so he did the one four one six one seven and so the the one four six and one four eight is a set of two observations um, but we'll go ahead and see um, first off what the original submitted observations look like so uh, 0.39 is the max residual there for the original of these two stacks is 0.39 um, with my three which again three stacks will have less signal to noise ratio so it won't be as good but I, I will also create the two stack for reference so 0.39 in this case versus a 0.46 and not terrible um, but let's go ahead and create for more apples to apple comparison we'll do two observations again with this object, so 2019 EG3. And so we have two observations. And so let's see how that compares. So 0.45. So really not that much different than when we had three observations. Um, so any, anytime observations are under one, that's usually pretty good anyway. So. Um, very, very decent observations here. So yes, this is a trickier object and that we had to adjust the sensitivity threshold. So um, that, that's just a one of those cases that you might run into. So another example is, um, I have another example here is 2019 RC. So this is an asteroid where, you know, yeah, uh, and I've already performed the uh, steps for calibration and everything, so I don't need to repeat it here because you're already familiar with that. So 2019 RC, and this was from station uh, W34. So I'm going to change to W34 here. And you'll notice, well, I should actually, so W34 was actually one of the first ones to get follow-up observations. So you know it's, it's right here. So I'm going to delete all the observations uh, beyond these original ones here, these uh, provided by Atlas. So uh, I, the orbit is very much not too well known with just these four observations. So when I return to Ephemeris, you'll notice that the object, the speed and position angle um, so it, it thinks 4.04 to uh, 3.59 and um, so if we try that well, let's see what happens so and again I'm just going to use um, and by the way it's a fairly crowded star field here so that's why you see all that um, yeah I'll go back to 10 because that again, works most of the time so using data set ephemeris so let's just see what happens. So um, again, of course, the reason I'm showing this is because it doesn't find it. OK, so th these are the results that it came back with. And so if you look in the quality column of the tracks, there's not one that particularly stands out. Now, that's not to say that it couldn't ex still be one of these potential tracks but um, yeah if you look at track combined window it also doesn't seem like a real detection so <clears throat> I'm not going to go through all of these I, I can already just tell you it's not one of these tracks so this is a case where again the orbit was not very well known and so the ephemeris uh, information these uh, 4.04 is 3.59 it cannot really be used that directly so instead I'm going to run the tracker again um, 
and open up the parameters just a bit more. So I'm going to say, let's go from three uh, to five and uh, maybe open these up just a bit more. So, so now we have 3,400 motion vectors and that's going to take a little bit longer, uh, but still under 10 minutes anyway. So let's go ahead and give that a moment. Okay, so these are the tracks that it came back with. So you'll notice that track number one here has a very high quality compared to the other tracks. So that gives pretty good confidence that this is the object in question. Uh, the other way to look at it is it stands out fairly well as an object here in the track combine window. So we're going to go ahead and create observations and see how we did. Again, what we had to do was widen the search space. And that's because as you'll note here, the speed of the object actually came back as 3.12 uh, arc seconds per minute. And that's definitely outside the original uh, parameter that was defined by the uh, ephemeris. Uh, the ephemeris indicated the object would be moving between 3.59 and 4.04 .04 arc seconds per minute. So that's why simply using the original in ephemeris information, uh, we were unable to, de to detect the object in that case. So let's go ahead and load up the star catalog. And because it does have a fairly high amplitude, uh, we can go ahead and optimize the track. And that gives us just a little bit of an improvement in the measurements that we take. So uh, what you're seeing here, this is a very crowded star field. So that's what's going on there. Uh, so we'll go ahead and create three observations. 2019RC is the object name. And uh, compare with what was originally submitted. So we'll delete these new observations, leaving only the original observations. And so original observations that had a 1.2 is the max residual there. So that's not great, uh, that's still acceptable. And so the new observations on the other hand had what uh, is apparently a 0.66 as the max residual. So definitely an improvement. And that's one thing in Tycho version 3.0 is uh, you will notice improved measurements in general. So, okay, so basically what we've done in this video, we looked at two asteroids, uh, the first of which was 2019 BG3. And that one was a case where you had to lower the sensitivity in order to detect the object. And the second one was 2019 RC here. and we were originally unable to detect, to detect it because the orbit of the object was not sufficiently well known to yield useful ephemeris information. Therefore, we had to open up the search space in the, uh, the tracker. So um, anyhow, that's hopefully this video uh, provides some insight for you if, you're, if you come across um, a challenging object and uh, maybe one of these two examples is similar to the issue that you've encountered. So anyway, thanks for watching and I will see you next time.